One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hi guys, how are you? So sorry about that. OMG. Camera problems. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you do all that sort of stuff? Wow. That was a panic. How are you? I'm going to put that over there. Can everyone see me and everyone hear me and everyone do everything and everything and everything? Because it would be really nice to know if you guys can see me and hear me and that sort of stuff. Um, that was a... You see, I should stick to audio. These cameras, they're just, they're just not there, man, you know. <laughs> they're not on my radar, if you will. Um, sorry about that. How are you? How's it going? You're very, 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 very welcome. And uh, here we are. And we're talking about Wave Lab Cast. Are you still there? You can see, can see and hear well. Hiya, Mike. Where did I put my glasses? Can't even see poor Mike. How are you, Mike? Good to see you, man. Uh, who else do we have in here? We have Mike. Anybody home? Anybody home? Sorry about that, Mike. Yeah, so basically, um, we'll be talking about music tonight. And it's not like music production, but it's about the use of music within the context of your podcast, content creation, etc. And that's not to say that you can't produce some music in Wave Lab Cast, right? So I'm assuming that everyone now at this stage has um, an idea of what Wave Lab Cast is. I'm going to spit out the, um, pop out the chat here so I can see you guys within eye, eye line. I've got screens all over the place here, lads. And then I'm going to do this. <sighs> cameras mike can't complain sun is shining in the uk all as well all is wheel i love that all is wheel with the world <laughs> look my alignment isn't even right am i in focus at least i hope i'm in focus let's do that look at that uh, this is our live people there we go how's that how's that mike am i looking better right this is where the show starts <laughs> We go pro from here on, I promise, right? Anyway, okay. So Wave Labcast. Wave Labcast is a DAW, okay? And we've been talking about this in different aspects of Wave Labcast for a while now. If you go onto the Wave Lab channel, you can see all the previous shows there, okay? And um, we've done loads of stuff, Track Inspector, we've looked at the interface, meters, you name it, right? There's one function of Wave Labcast that we haven't well, we kind of just mentioned, happened to mention, and that's a thing called ducking, okay? And the reason I wanted to bring this to you this week was um, it's such a brilliant little function, little function, I say. If you, I, I my everyday is TV production, film production, game, all that gamut of stuff, post-production. And... Uh, Radio has a lot to do with that as well. So in a lot of media or content that you listen to in the world, and a lot on radio I know, there's a thing called ducking. So what is ducking? Ducking is when the voice is going along, chuggity chug, talk, 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 there's music going on underneath, okay? So what ducking does what is it basically, as the voice is continuing to speak the ducking ducks the music in between the phrases of speech okay so what you're doing is you're reducing the level of the sound of the music okay and thus in theory making the voice more intelligible to the ear okay now it's done so relatively successfully <laughs> in a lot of RT, in a lot of uh, radio and TV and you can hear mixed results on air as you drive along in your car um, but in a DAW right in a digital audio workstation like Nuendo or Pro Tools any of these professional standards right um, you can get it's tricky to set up it's it's crazy to kind of send send your signals to different from plugins 
two other plugins to do stuff, keying and stuff, right? And it's kind of for 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 inverted commas. I'm not going to say a novice, but somebody that wouldn't necessarily be, you know, working on this daily professionally. Um, it can be tricky to set up. It can be tricky to get right, and it can be tricky to um, consistently set it up. Right. The great thing about Wave Loudcast is it's all automatic for you I don't mean totally automatic there are some parameters but the amount of parameters that you got to deal with in the context of what you'd have to do in a big professional DAW is minimal okay so I want to look at ducking tonight okay and this function of how it will help you and make your voice more intelligible when you have music playing underneath I want to look at why music why would you use music in the first place because I've heard uh, I, I because of the game I'm in podcasting is a massive interest to me I work on specific podcasts as well buddies of mine have podcasts so it's such a prevalent uh, media giant <laughs> currently right with everyone able to produce a podcast okay but how they i i've said it before you have a massive interest in racing cars or vintage cars and you want to bring a show to the world we've talked about how you put that together with your wireframe structure okay check out the previous shows they're all there but how you put that together in a daw in a digital audio workstation to produce a show from start to finish it's a very daunting task and wave lab casts help you do that very very successfully okay now it's not just available for podcasts you can take your youtube videos or your tiktok videos and bring the audio from there bring them into wave lab cast clean up your audio you know enhance your audio make sure the levels are right you know bring in sound effects just bring up bring up your game do you know make it better okay so that's what wave lab cast is all about so music well where do you get it do, do you guys know where you get it you've you're all over it, right mike um if you go on to this here we'll have a quick look just just while we're here okay if we go on to the wave lab cast um what's the name of it uh the steinberg.net website okay type in steinberg.net go to more products okay and up here you'll go to all products and in all products you'll find this page and that's the wave loud cast page and there you can download a, a, a trial okay or else you can buy it straight from the website brilliant happy days okay and there are some there are some uh, hardware um, recorders or interfaces um, that you can get a free copy of this as well and it's not a light version or a, a, a full version if you want it's the one version it's brilliant my currently producing first season oh here we go message retracted mike you're amongst friends man you know don't worry about it you can talk to us it's all right we don't bite your head off i promise okay brilliant so music how do you use music where do you use music okay so invariably there's going to be a lot of people using music in the context of opening your show okay so this week we got so and so talking about such and such and this is my intro music okay and then there's other people that have and I, I really needed to talk about this one um, as much to get it off my chest as anything <laughs> um, for a lot of people that have dodgy audio um, you know Skype calls with loads of noise on there or they record the whole thing in a really l horrible room please go back and listen to the show about the recording um, best tips for recording 
your podcast show you'll find it on the wave lab channel um a lot of people leave music underneath it okay to kind of hide some ills um a pal of mine he's just produced his first podcast he had music going all the way through it and it was a massive distraction i felt um to the really important content that he had going on but he was nervous about his voice like a naked voice in all that space and everyone's hearing you so he put music underneath it just to kind of almost hide the voice as well or make the voice sound a little better it's a very fine line to use music all the way through um personally i'd absolutely emphatically and 100 percent say no don't keep music going all the way through there's a couple of reasons for that okay one there's a dynamic in music well generally there's dynamic in music there's the quiet bits and there's the loud bits okay if it is consistent same rhythm and just keep going drones and stuff like that then it's too distracting it gets tiring on the ear. I can't focus on what the guy is saying because the, the music keeps coming in. Okay? You're using all this vast amount of music on your um, podcast. And there is, and this is probably one of the most important points in the whole show. You don't own that music. Okay? You don't necessarily have the rights to that music okay what you're doing is you're depending on where you get your music if your podcast is going out on youtube or your content is going out on youtube they have a library available to everyone and you can grab and take as much of that music as you want and put it into your productions as long as it stays in youtube i don't know if you've ever taken a, a piece of content make up a video at home or something like that put it up onto youtube maybe have a i don't know imagine a rolling stones number or something like that a commercial track and you put it on there and then suddenly you get the email down and say hey this is commercial music do you want to knock it off or uh, do you want to blank it out or do you want to change anyway you're not allowed to use um someone else's music unless you get the rights to do so okay so there's loads of ads out there that say sorry there's loads of mike i'll be with you in two seconds man there's loads of um google returns if you google um royalty free, free music you get a load of sites that prefer uh free music okay but you need to pay them a monthly fee or a yearly fee that covers the royalties for the music that you're using there's no website necessarily there might be a couple of websites that you find that guys actually put up music generously massively generously uh, for you to use in production okay i'm not mentioning any here tonight but i'm sure there's could be some out there I know that there's stock and photograph um, websites that give stuff as long as you credit them. But it is not um, okay for you to take any track from anywhere on the internet and put it into your production and say, that sounds great, that's for me. Woo! You know, you can't do it. It's You're not legally allowed, okay? Now, Mike can't believe i left me glasses give me glasses anyway it doesn't matter uh i find wave of class quite straightforward and more sufficient than for our little podcast i played a bit with cubase for music in my earlier life uh, but i found it overkill for podcast okay I, I totally agree cubase is a stunning piece of kit like out of this world i don't know if you mentioned it we we i've i did an interview with my son manis and he's uh, getting his base together and he's starting to learn the mando and all that and we put a setup in his bedroom and man cubase was there i hadn't played with it for a couple of years wow 
wow and again you can get that cubase um a, a light version for want of a better term um with certain hardware that you buy for free a piece of kit for free like that if you're a musician get into it get into it quick it's a stunning piece of kit okay um early life but found it overkill for podcasts we're hoping to use music only intermittently during shows but we'll give ducking a go okay mike so i hope you heard what i was saying to you about the the music rights for people whether you can use it or not okay because the music is my own just intro and other bits i don't know how wave lab cast in processing acoustic guitar or ukulele might stick to cubase for that okay i'm not exactly sure about the third bit there big man but mike um first of all using pieces of music intermittently is totally cool if you write your own music you can use <laughs> knock yourselves out lads twice on a sunday as a friend of mine was <laughs> sent in an email the other day to me um you can use as much as your own of your own music as you possibly could wish for okay knock yourself out okay because music is my own intro and other bits i don't know how wave lab cast Wave <laughs> cast is in processing acoustic guitar and ukulele might also stick to cubase for that you could absolutely emphatically throw down your guitar and your ukulele tracks in wave lab cast you could mix that little track in there with your acoustic and thing and then using the track inspector to bring things up clean things up make it sound nice you got your meters there there's no reason in the world why somebody starting out couldn't do their full production in wave loud cast if it's all live instruments and live microphones totally get it in there totally you could you know and the ducking feature might help in certain aspects of your music production but you get all these amazing plugins with it as well don't forget you know your reverbs your compressors your eqs brilliant totally mike totally Throw them together in Wave Loudcast, spit it out, okay? Bounce it out, and then you have a stereo wav, okay? That's your bed, or that's your intro music. And bring it into a different project for your, um, for your, imagine your podcast project. Then you have that wav sitting in your drive somewhere that you can pull in every time. Or even better, okay? Set up a new template in Wave Lab Cast. So you don't have to go and set up a vocal track or a, 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 a voiceover track and an interview track and a music track and a this and a that and the other every single time. Bring in your music. Put the, the structure of your podcast together and save it as a template. So now you double click on the templates when you want to create a new project in Wave Lab Cast. Boom. So much of your work is done already. Absolutely brilliant. You know, super important. Let's launch it. Mm. I shall try then. You know, it's funny, just in that context, I'll be working on films and mixing films and going to stage and doing that sort of stuff and um the amazing thing about uh nuendo is versus other types of daws that work in professional circles other professional daws workflows generally use premix tracks okay in the film so imagine I was Hans Zimmer and I'm making a movie and it's going to this specific DAW and it's going to stage and they're all mixing it and it's going great. They work to pre-existing tracks. So a musician or a producer or a composer got together, put the whole thing together. They bounced out a wav of the finished music and they sent that over to the stage brilliant thing about nuendo is right you can take the full composition from 
um, whatever the composer is, I mean Hans Zimmer, right? You get his Cubase session, okay? And you can import it directly into Nuendo. So now you're mixing your movie and it's going crash, crash, whatever. And you're going, hang on a second. The fiddles are a little loud there. And you race over and you pull down the fiddles a little bit, or the, the violins. And you have full access to the whole thing in your timeline. Brilliant. So if you did have a guitar and a mando, individual tracks, in your template it could be really handy that you have access to each of those elements do you understand what i mean brilliant mike one thing stopping me from getting wave loud cast was limited amount of tracks steinberg's website only talk about five tracks which is not enough when i can track contact it it's actually eight just enough yeah but you're talking about stereo tracks okay now how you use those i mean if you're talking about whatever seven tracks of music and one track of voice then you know you're going to run into trouble okay because you'd be ducking and diving and jumping over tracks and stuff and stuff and stuff okay it's all about your workflow mike you know um we'll get them to look at that definitely but it's all about your workflow mike you know you don't necessarily need one track for one piece of audio throughout the whole thing okay that's why you have the mixing options and stuff like that so you can checkerboard did i talk to you about checkerboarding let's that, let's have a wee look at checkerboarding here okay so here's my voice going along there's my interview there's my uh intro okay here's my music okay going along now i'm just gonna edit that real quick imagine that and i did that and then there is my intro my music goes out lovely oh how beautiful so instead of having all my tracks sitting on top of each other, okay, I'm checkerboarding these, right? So there's a bit of voice, there's a bit of voice, there's a bit of music, okay, there's my outro music. Why am I not getting that? Can't get that at all. Anyway, the, when I say checkerboarding, okay, see the way that starts there and then it jumps down to here, okay? So that can play there. Sorry, lads, I'm just going to do this for a second. Uh, where am I? There I am. Sorry. I'm going to do this because I think that this machine has been acting up today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of that. Quick restart. Nothing like it. And then we did that. And I bet you I have them now, don't I? Told you. Listen. Showbiz people. Okay. So checkerboarding is a piece of music here. And instead of crashing the next piece of music in on top, okay, what you do is you checkerboard it like this and then I can grab that piece up there so as I go along with this piece of music here music 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 I know that the next piece of music is coming up so I can be prepared with this track to hit this point and this music can you guys see that and then I know that this is coming up here so the next piece of music will be down here next piece of music will be up here and that's called checkerboarding and checkerboarding is super important super important in any sort of mixing or um, putting your show together totally so super important it's all about the workflow it's all about getting it bang on from the get go okay brilliant so look at me there I am um, so let me look over here so that's checkerboarding Mike so with checkerboarding you can do it with voice, you can do it with anything you want, okay? Um, it's all about your workflow and how you uh, approach your gig, basically. Um, so on track one, you're just going to have voiceover. On the last track, last two tracks, music, checkerboarded, okay? That leaves you loads of tracks for different punctuations voices sound effects um backgrounds atmoses um blah, clips from other things and by checkerboarding and putting them all together and structuring your podcast like that however amount of tracks you have listen the beatles only had four tracks don't forget <laughs> you know what i mean so hello <laughs> man you know 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I saw a fabulous documentary the other day and it was George Martin and they offered him, I think they offered him eight tracks or something. He says, way too much, way too much. <laughs> we'll never use them. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Anyway, brilliant. That's George Martin. Lovely man. Lovely man. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about ducking. So when I'm listening to this, I'm just going to mute. I'm going to go over here, guys. OK, so over to this. What do you call it? DAW. I'm going to mute that track and mute that track. I'm going to throw on my headphones as well. We're going to be super cool. Can I hear this? And then a Borderlands yeah. is There's culturally me. very okay, significant, according to some. Yeah, but Mike, listen, come here to me. That's what I'm talking about. Mike says there, the Beatles had clever people to make their four tracks work. OK, they may have had clever people. But they were stuck to having to use what they had. OK, and they still got their message across. The Beatles may have had four tracks. But it's how you use those. It's developing the muscle memory. It's developing the techniques to use those four tracks to the best of your ability and come up with something beautiful. Now, this goes a long way to helping you do that. Way of Loudcast does that, okay? Because it takes so much of the work away from you and it sticks it into the back of the, under the bonnet and it does its thing. But Mike, you are the clever person that will be able to evolve, develop your workflow, do what you have to do to get your podcast out there. Because it's all about enabling people that aren't full time sound engineers or professional this or professional that to get their thoughts, ideas and dreams out to a to a sympathetic audience. A bunch of people that love and want to hear more about what you have to say and your pet subjects that's clever that's clever mike no problem to you no problem to you it'll help you so much and you'll get your workflow you'll get your groove and in a couple of weeks you'll be just banging them out brilliant anyway ducking which will also help you mike uh okay sorry so here's the voice on this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands, and Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are playing it. We'll be talking to Manus tonight, and we're... Okay, so, playing it? What are you talking about, man? So here's my music. Podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands, and Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are playing it. We'll be talking to Manus tonight. Okay, so the music is very loud there. Now, I have options here. I can just grab that. Or there's a... a I can grab that and drag it down. Have a listen. Tonight, and we're hoping that he'll give us an insight into what makes Borderlands so... Which isn't too bad, okay? There you go. There you go. So, Mike is just saying there, um, and he's right. Listen, for production, I have me, myself, and I. <laughs> like so many of you out there. Like so many out there. That's why Wave Loud Cast is easy enough to crack. You can. Most punters will be able to get their head around this in a very short time. I need to fo uh, I need to fo or fo need to focus on the content. Um, don't worry about it, Mike. That's what we're here for. We're here for talking. Anyway, so he's right. This takes over an awful lot of the work that you don't have to worry about and distract from your content creation. Okay, brilliant. Love it. Well done, Mike. Super stuff. Anyway, let's go back to these um, ducking. So I'm just going to zoom in there a wee bit. Okay, and you can see the music is there. I can drag the level of this music up or down like that with that. See how the waveform is changing? But that's also, that's not just the waveform changing. That's the uh, volume of the music 
is increasing all the time. You can see the little numbers going there. Volume envelope. Okay. So I'm going to set that there. In Borderlands, and in Borderlands is culturally very significant according to some gamers that are playing it. Would be okay. So that's that's a very heavy level. But if I play from here, listen. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands. And this is something I see an awful lot. People are afraid to go mixing and stuff, right? So I double click there and I double click there. So I dragged uh, that up there and I dragged this up here. Sorry, lads. Let me just get me mouse. Come on, mousey mouse. I'm going to do that then because it doesn't want to work. So listen to how loud the music is now. Watch this. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game okay. Borderlands. So now we're starting to mix the whole thing. Do you see what I'm saying to you there? And I started with the music louder here and then brought it down. Now that was an extreme example just to give you a listen to what I was talking about there. But what I'm doing there is I'm increasing the volume there and then bringing it down for underneath the voice. There's a little break here between the voice and the next interview, okay? Personally, I drag that down a little bit and little peek there, little peek there. Just bring that up slightly. Sorry about that, lads. Uh, grab that bad boy, bring that up there. And if you have a listen into what makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. Borderlands, the first Borderlands came. So you see what I'm doing there? I'm starting to mix and these are, uh, I don't know what you call them, little dots, right? These little dots are fab. You can double click and get a dot at any stage throughout the timeline there. And you can drag it up, drag it down. And that basically brings the, the, the level of the music up or down, okay? I'm dotting all over the place. I'm going all over the place with this. So what I want to do is I want to do it automatically. OK, and ducking is the way to do it. OK. What I wanted to do is to play the music. When somebody's talking, I want the music to come down gently. I want them to talk. I want the music to come up like we were doing with the dots, but without having to write all the dots. OK, <laughs> that's what ducking is. OK, so if you look here, there's a little kind of copy type interesting icon and you click on that and these come alive. You get two buttons here. You get source. OK, so where's my source? So what it wants to know is what's driving the music to come down. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it wants to go music, music, music. And then as soon as a signal comes in, it wants to know what signal coming into this should I bring the music down? OK, and that is the host and the interview, because this is my speaking track. There's my intro and there's my interview. So I want these signals to go to the music track. To affect the ducking, OK? So as soon as the music is playing. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands. And Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some. Did you hear that? And have a listen to this. I'm just going to increase all of this so we can hear it a little more extreme. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands. And Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are playing it. We'll be talking to Manus tonight, and we're hoping that he'll give us an insight into what makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. Borderlands, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago, and it was one of the first games. So instead of me doing all my clickety clickety clicks, I'm bringing the level up and, oh no, that wasn't right. I'm dragging it down. I'm too quiet, too loud, too stuff. It's all happening automatically. Okay. So how do I control how much goes on? How much does the music dip? When does the music dip? Okay. We got the third button here. And this is your settings. See this? 
Ducker track. Dun, 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 dun. Great. Okay. We've got a couple of controls here. Okay. And these are super simple. And it'll take you approximately five minutes to get your head around these. Super simple. Okay. I'm going to throw those up there. Can you see? You can all see that. Okay. So I'm going to hit play on the music. <laughs> On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Border. Okay, so music attenuation is the, the level that it's going to be. Do you understand what I mean? So I can drag that down and I'm going to hit this. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game See, Borderlands. And Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are like playing that it. Level. We'll be talking to Manus tonight and we're hoping okay. that he'll give us an insight That's into what makes now, Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. Borderlands, the first Borderlands came out. Uh, okay, so that's the level of my music underneath my voice. Okay, that's my music attenuation. The next little thing we want to look at here is called the voice threshold. And you can set this to whatever, see this here? That's the level of your voice. Okay, it's uh, currently at 1.3 dB. Okay, you can set the threshold when the voice kicks in imagine imagine there's a switch okay and the voice is hitting that switch so boing there's the switch hitting that means wave lab cast says oi hang on i better attenuate the music Ooh, bring it down okay so this is the switch at what point does the voice what level does the voice hit that switch to bring the music down so let's have a quick go there on this week's podcast we'll be talking about the game borderlands and borderlands is culturally very significant according okay it's not affecting it that much is it it's a song game. now have a look on this week's podcast we'll be talking about the yeah, game borderlands and Bo so at the first point it wasn't affecting the attenuation much but at the second one we got a much better result Okay, have a listen to the uh, the intro. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands, and Borderlands is okay. culture. So we're loving that. <laughs> I keep tripping over that piece of video. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so the attenuation. So that that's that's the level that the voice is triggering that switch for wave loud cast to go. Oh, right, bring it down. The next control is the attenuation hold time. Now this is really, really, really important, okay? When you click the switch, okay, and the music comes down, how long does it stay down for? Because if you have somebody that speaks a little and then pauses for a bit and then talks for a bit, or this week on the new podcast, we got a bit of music, bit of music, bit of music. Podcast for beginners. We'll be approaching such and such. Bit of music, bit of music, bit of music. So how long does it stay down for? Okay. And you can set that again. You can set it if there was a bit of speech. Let me just set it up underneath Manus's bit here because we've got a couple of breaks here can you see that i'm just going to go over here because you can't see that let me just do that so see the little bit of breaks there okay so i'm going to split that there and drag that piece there way get back you okay so there's a little bit of a break now i'm not sure exactly how much that is but it's not long so there's manus a good while ago and it was one of the first games I can't remember what the art style is called, but it was one of the first games to use the... Do you hear how long that's holding? Now I'm going to hold the attenuation by over four seconds because that break is definitely not over four seconds. Let me just drag that down. It gives a much bigger break. A good while ago, and it was one of the first games... I can't remember... Okay, so that was over two seconds we set the attenuation time. I'm going to bring that back to half a second ish okay have a listen a good while ago and it was one of the first games i can't remember what the art style is called but brilliant huh so that's how long it holds it down you can go right down to zero 
imagine you went down to zero and we just finished man as a speech and it was one of the first games okay well we got to fade up and fade down ago and it was one of the first games so it's up pretty much very quickly now the reason i'm saying about the attenuation whole time is depending on how you do the next two controls you can get severe kind of pumping effect whereas uh, the music is jumping up in between every little break in the speech and it is just sickening to listen to it's like and you got to be really careful with this so setting your um settings in the ducker to be a little more gentle it's a little more gentle on the ear you get a much more stylistic st classy response do you know what i mean so the other the, the other two settings that you have to look at are the uh music fade out so when the speech stops music fading out or when the speech starts the music fading out okay so at this point here look on this week's podcast we'll be talking about do you hear how fast that dr dropped out i'm just going to extend that on this week's podcast we'll be talking about the game board so that was much longer on this week's podcast we'll be talking about the game hear how soft that is now let's just go real long on that just for giggles on this week's podcast we'll be talking about the game borderlands and on borderlands is see how long it's taken to fade underneath my voice now so let's just go i don't know what are we gonna do will we do half a second we go half a second mike oh no no you can put your compression on the voice it's literally just the signal from that track going to your music track where you set up ducking now you don't have to set up ducking specifically on the music track either or if you have multiple music tracks you can have uh, you can have ducking set up on all of your tracks so imagine i have you can guys can see that there's one music track there's another music track if i set up ducking again i can go host and interview now everything that's happening with the intro and the interview is affecting all my music tracks of course that's muted but it's happening across the board there if you understand what i mean okay so yes you can have your compression on your voice using your um compressors and or else you know your additional effects but no it's literally just saying oh there's a signal coming in here because i've been told about it here okay that's all there is to it mike super easy then our fade in when our speech finishes we want to know when the music comes up so have a listen to this so attractive to the average gamer borderlands the, the first borderlands came out i just love the effect it's brilliant it's so soft and smooth that you can just set it up with these really simple controls it's fab okay so i'm going to extend the fade music in and we'll have a listen let me just get rid of Manny down there a wee bit so we can hear the music coming back up. Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. Okay, let's go longer. What makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer? Okay. So, you start to get a feel for these things and how they Two. affect. What makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer? I love it, it's so super smooth. Do you see what I'm doing now, Mike? So now I can grab my bit of interview. We have a listen here. Let's just go fade in there. And just, uh, I'm gonna go less than that. I'm just gonna maybe hold it for half a second, bring down the threshold. I kind of like that applying it. We'll be talking to Manus tonight and we're hoping that he'll give us an insight. In Maybe I'll leave it there. Okay. Have a listen to this now. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game Borderlands. And Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are playing it. We'll be talking to Manus tonight and we're hoping that he'll give us an insight into what makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. 
Borderlands, the, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago, and it was one of the first games. I can't remember what the art style is called, but it was one of the first games to use this technique. Okay, so sorry, that was the second piece of music coming in there. But you see how simple it is just to set up your settings on that. Now, I kind of felt the out from the speech there was a little long that was held down there for a little too long. I'd like it smoother, a nice undulation, if you will, um, throughout the delivery. There's just just while I'm here, right? I know we've been playing around with dragging stuff here, there and everywhere just for illustration purposes. But let me just go here. Have a listen. Okay, let me just grab that. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the... That's gone too fast for me. I'm just going to increase that. On this week's podcast, we'll be talking about the game nice. Borderlands. And Borderlands is culturally very significant, according to some gamers that are playing it. We'll be talking to Manus tonight, and we're hoping that he'll give us an insight into what makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer. Borderlands, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago and it was one of the first games, I can't remember what the art style is called, but it was one of the first games to use this technique. Do you hear how smooth that is? That is just pure class. It's really taking care of all of that music. This end bit as well, just here, you're smoothing out the music just to fade it out underneath. We're not cutting music hard cuts or edits or anything like that. I'm just doing a nice little fade. The ducking is still working, but it's working really well with that fade. Borderlands, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago, and it was one of the first games, I can't remember what the art style there is called, see? but it was one of the first games to use this technique uh, on their graphics that makes it kind of look like a, a comic book. The music on or the I'm just playing the music underneath this for giggles, okay? Because Manus is now talking, and yeah, ducking's happening, and it's all brilliant, loving that. It makes it kind of look like a, a comic book, where all the uh, lines are outlined in black, and all of it is, it's not really meant to look realistic, it's sort of cartoonish. And... Okay, so you understand what I'm saying to you when I don't think it's a brilliant idea to keep the music running underneath? I'm trying to listen to what the guy is saying. But I'm totally distracted by what's going on with the music underneath. There's a lot of sound effects going there and that sort of stuff. Um, I throw things like that crazy left, right curve balls in there. This is all my tunes, right? So that is totally distracting to me. I can't hear what he's saying. It's not working for me. So I'm not engaging with the podcast, you know? And I'm thinking about what's going on with the music and I'm not listening to the really important information going on. So I'm going to mute that again. And we're just going to, last time, outro, bit of music, interview. Okay. What makes Borderlands so attractive to the average gamer? Borderlands, the first Borderlands came out a good while ago. And it was one of the first games, I can't remember what the art style is called, but it was one of the first games to use this technique. Uh, Do you understand what I'm saying? Now I can totally focus on what he's saying. And now the interview is happening. If there's anything bubbling underneath that, you don't need that distraction. Be confident about your voice. Be confident about how you put the interviews together in your editing or how you recorded it. Or, you know, be confident. Be, be strong and humble. Always be humble. But be sure that you've put the work into editing this interview, which is now fabulous because you've done so much work with the track inspector, with the editing, with, you know, compression, all the things we've talked about in Wave Lab Cast. Um, we'll talk about mixing again, but whatever you do, you just want to carry that message so try not to distract with a lot of music happening underneath just for the sake of having the music underneath to cover up any sort of nastiness 
because if it's noise on there use the noise reduction if it's too sibilant use the de-esser you know you, you have the toys to hand yeah might be useful if many people are talking at the same time um it would all depend on how you set it up mike but if you can set it up accordingly yeah totally totally who's the dominant voice though who's the one to be heard you know like the big debate that went on last week who controls what people say or how people are heard there's a lovely thing um called gating okay and it's literally just at closing a gate so imagine i have this microphone open and i have 15 guests okay and they're all sitting around the same room okay my microphone is open and i'm talking but when i stop and listen to guest one talking his mic is open and he's talking but so are all the other microphones at the same time okay now gates depending on the settings that you set close the signal from this microphone and you set a threshold which is literally just the same as the voice threshold in your ducking here so it knocks off the signal from this so you don't get all the air and the electronics and the thing and the thing and the thing all you're getting is when I speak when I speak my voice opens up the mic signal and that's the only signal that you're going to be hearing when he talks he can be talking at the same time as me his mic signal opens but the other 14 mic signals are shut down as well so that's called gating you should look into that as well it shuts down it doesn't shut down but it basically reduces the amount of noise coming from each microphone in the setup so you get a much cleaner signal so you'd have 15 microphones all open at the same time with nobody talking they're all picking up the air in the room there's all electronic noise actually going on there there's noise in the leads you know 15 mics it adds up okay <laughs> but the gating kind of shuts down the ones that aren't being used automatically it's really really handy um <laughs> good man so he's saying uh, ducking might be useful if many people are talking at the same time provided they're on different tracks you're in command guys you are totally in command you know this software is so accessible it's your workflow it's how you put yourself out there your message how you heard and like Mike says it takes so much of the weight off you that you can focus on your content you don't need to know about compression necessarily you don't need to know what all the knobs and the buttons are and the switches are in in noise reduction it's music mixing your music for you very smooth classy love that you know brilliant okay with the ducking you got your meters you got everything going on so it's a real option for you for the lovely mics of this world and listen mike thanks for your input tonight it was fabulous to have you there and you know driving the whole thing fair play to you listen come down next time with and give us an idea of where we find your podcast we'd love to have a listen love to have a listen um this video is going to be up on the wave lab channel um in the next couple of minutes so mike when you do get your podcast together put the link in and we'll have a listen to it ourselves this is what you can do a working example of what you can do in wave lab cast brilliant eh yeah let's do it okay that was a joy people love and love and love and sorry about the delay at the start cameras cameras action cameras lights action etc 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 um we weren't too late but um that was a lovely little show and I love this music ducking. It's going to save so many of you so much heartache and pain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, don't forget, you can save your settings there, by the way. Oh, sorry. Let me just show you here. Let me go back to the tracking. Okay. Imagine you find your, again, your template. You know, you got your intro piece of music. In, uh, this is the thing, such and such podcast. And we are coming to you from Cincinnati, etc. Okay. You got your piece of music you can save your settings as okay 
save your settings as whatever wherever okay and that's part of your template okay so all those settings are saved for the next time that you want to throw a show together so you go in create new go to your specific template opens up and all your ducking and everything is set up already beautiful love it love 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 now it's friday evening go out and enjoy yourselves you've, <laughs> you've been looking at this old man for too long okay um yet to be published we'll do the next time okay great mike listen throw it into the comments in these shows uh, very useful only listen to your previous webinars lately <gasps> mike we were getting on so well what do you mean lately um spread the word you know there's some glorious learning in there you know especially about the wave loud cast i mean it's a no-brainer for anyone that wants to get in and do some content creation it doesn't have to be a podcast it doesn't have to be a youtube video it could be just you going down the park recording i don't know the spring birds and coming up with something playing with something and you know it's very very accessible this piece of software and if you got your hands in a and grabbed a couple of samples of recording from your phone from a handheld recorder um we talked about how you get a signal from the real world into a computer how you can bring wave loud cast on a laptop and an audio interface and go down to the local park and plug in your guitars and your drum whatever and record down there or sound effects so such massive scope for all of this massive scope and again mike it's it's all up to the user you know it's a fabulous piece of gear anyway i'm gonna love you and leave you and it's been such a such a joy mike have a lovely evening thanks for your time and your input you're very very good um and i will talk to you next time hopefully we will get into mixing so we'll get into the mixing of shows and ultimately we'll start delivering our show to whatever platform we want to but we'll look at mixing to picture probably next time or even editing audio to picture which is super important super important okay good night good luck and uh have a great week see you later <laughs>